Because we are your favorite YouTubers, someone has reached out to us and said, Jens, help me out when it comes to this topic. Which options should I go for? Fixed versus variable. Now, no, it's really interesting for us to really understand the difference between the fixed and the variable, right? Now, the reason why I'm saying it's important for us to understand the fixed and the variable is that if I'm going to take one, I need to understand the cons of it yeah. and the pros of it. Yeah. So that once I do take or pull the trigger, I understand what I'm putting myself into. So I think the first one, please do explain what is variable interest rate. When it comes to variable interest, we're talking about a type of interest on a loan that we took that is dependent on what the current prime rate is. And if the prime interest rate is low, that means I'm paying low on the interest of whatever loan that I took. Yeah. So this could be a home loan, a credit card, or whatever loan that I took. So what we're basically saying is that the variable is basically basically based on market conditions. That's it. So if the market is going well, then that means that you'll have lower interest rates, right? If the market is doing bad, that means that you'll have higher interest rates, right? Yeah. That's 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 really 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 more of. Do you think? Or I put it to you, right? Do you think this is more of a gamble that? If things go well, then I'm on the safe side. But if things go bad, then I'm on. I'm not on the safe side. I'm thinking Gold Reef City. I'm, I'm hoping that we're gonna get that emoji <laughs> of catching. Definitely, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the more fixed is for the guys that are more conservative, right? The guys that are always saying that I really want to understand how much I'm going to be paying on a monthly basis. So what what fixed interest rates basically is is that. I'm going to go to the bank and say that I want my interest rates to not change, be it that market conditions are good or market conditions are bad. Yeah. So now that's what fixed interest rate is. So let's really understand what influences the interest rate because now we're looking at the current economy and what's happening right now. I mean, when we looked at COVID, a lot of people now that we're talking about it is that let's understand what was happening in the economy, that a lot of people were locked up in their houses and there was not much economic activity. Mm. So now what happens is that the government with the Reserve Bank, of course, they are thinking in terms of how can we stimulate the market so that more people can buy. Mm. There can be more activity because remember something, when it comes to more activity, that means more people are taking loans. And again, it means that more businesses can grow as much as even the defaulting does become more. But now it, it becomes a challenge whereby there's too many people that are borrowing. So ultimately, that again is a risk from the Reserve Bank and, and now hence, they really try with so many systems in terms of how can we find that sweet spot in terms of economic activity, where is that sweet spot? So they are responsible literally for doing that. Hence, it goes up and it goes down based on the economic activity. Mm, no, I like, I, I really like to highlight that point that you said, right? That if during during COVID, everybody was indoors, so now interest rates were actually low because they were trying to stimulate the economy and getting people to buy things, right? Yeah. Now, in them, here's the thing about e uh, economics, right? You can't have a true equilibrium whereby we're saying that at this point, everything will be perfect. Yeah. So it's always changing based on the market conditions. So when it was during COVID, we were saying that 7% is going to be enough to stimulate the economy. Yeah. The economy got overstimulated and people took out debt a lot. Yeah. Now interest rates are sitting at 11.75. I'm praying that it doesn't go down. It doesn't go up again. You know with the news, man, oh. the fact that we watch these news every day, this week it says it's going to go Eesh. up, next week it goes down. That's a gambler. That's the first thing that <laughs> That's I saw. That's the face of a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that I saw today when I woke up that uh, there's a possibility that interest rates might actually go up again. And just yesterday... They were saying it might go down. But now there was a follow-up conversation that if it does go down and people are already in a mess, people might go back to the bank and say that I want more debt, which means that it's going to overstimulate again. So the conversation was that they want to actually keep it where it is or actually increase it. That's, 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 that's really scary. That's really scary. Now, for a lot of people right now, they are thinking that let me fix or let me keep it as a variable. Now, give us the pros and the cons. Let's discuss the pros and cons of the variable interest rate. When we're focusing on variable, as we did mention that, now our interest rate percentage is dependent on what's happening within the market. Yeah. So therefore, if the market, if there's 
let's just say, let's take it back to that example of um, COVID, whereby we were seeing them at their all-time lowest at 7%. So if I had purchased at that point in time at variable, so let's say I was doing a flip at that point in time and I managed to sell, that means that I might have been in a deal and out yeah. being charged really low interest. Or let's just say that I did hold on to that property for that year. Now, what would have happened is that I would have seen so much when it came to my cash flow, of course, if I did buy it at the right price. Yeah. So that's the pro when it came to variable. Now, the con is that, let's look at it now. Let's just say that I did buy it during COVID at 7% and I was only making about 500 bucks. So let's just say that my income was 7,500 and then my expenses were 7,000. I can guarantee you right now that cash flow positive has tipped over and it's cash flow negative. So looking at my pros and cons for, for your uh, variable interest rate, right? Yeah. The first one that I saw was that the interest rate when you're looking at getting your, 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 your bond or your loan, it's generally cheaper. Yeah. It's generally cheaper if I'm actually going to be doing it variable. So what do I mean by this? Most of the time, say for instance right now, uh, the prime lending rate is sitting at 11.75%. Yeah. Right? When I go and I apply and I say that I want a variable, right? It's generally going to be cheaper than if I'm going to be looking at a fix. For each individual, right? It's, going, it's always going to be more expensive for you to fix than keep it variable. Reason being, if I go to the bank today and I say that I want it to be variable, they're going to be giving me an interest rate, say for instance, 11.75. Okay. If I say I want to fix it, chances are they're going to increase it from the 11.75. So say for instance, based on my credit score, they might say that, okay, if you want to fix it, you'd be sitting at 12.25%. Now, if I'm saying that I want to keep it variable, that means that I'm actually sitting at 11.75. However, if I wanted to fix it, it was going to be 12.25%, which means that 12.25% would be generally more expensive than what it would have been if it was actually variable. Now, the con of it is then the question that how long will it be at 11.75? Uh, now, if it's at 11.75, for say for instance two months and then two months later they say that interest rates go high then maybe the fixed part would have been actually better than the variable as we said when we started it might be a bit of a gamble that will interest rates go up or will interest rates go down so the bank is basically taking a they're also taking a gamble on their side saying that if this person wants to fix their interest rates what would happen if interest rates go up now, in order for us to be able to understand the psychology behind the bank, we need to understand the difference between the prime lending rate and the repo rate, right? So repo rate is basically the South African Reserve Bank charging the, the commercial bank, let's say the red bank right now, right? So the South African Reserve Bank is charging the red bank interest. Now, the thing is, if the South African Reserve Bank keeps on taking their, their interest rates higher, this means that it's more expensive on the red bank for them to actually borrow you money. So now, here's the dilemma for the, the, the red bank. If it keeps it fixed and then the South African Reserve Bank keeps on taking interest rates higher to a point whereby now this interest rate that they had charged you is now at the same level, then it becomes a problem. I'll give you an example. Say for instance, if you had fixed your, your, your interest rates back in uh, 2021, right? You would be at, the, the interest rate was sitting at 7% and then you had, would have said that, no, uh, please fix it. And then let's say they had said 8%, right? Or 8.5%. Now that the repo rate is close to the 8%, you can only understand how the bank is actually feeling, which is why they actually need to make it more expensive for you as the consumer than what it would have been. But now here's the thing about also fixing the the having a variable or fixed it's going to be based on hindsight so it's easy for someone to say that you should have fixed it back then when it was at uh, seven percent then someone saying that keep it variable right now because it's actually high now we can only tell or you can only be judged by history 
if we are saying that no at 11.75 we shouldn't have fixed it because interest rates were going to go down or were going to go high 2018 let's go back to 2018 whereby the prime lending rate was 10.25 percent at the end of the year and then in 2019 the prime lending rate was at 10 percent at the end of 2020 the prime lending rate was at seven percent this was where the buzz was yeah agents, the, right the, the main selling point of agents was that right now it's the best time for you to be signing at the end of 2021 it wasn't so bad it was at 7.25 so we should have seen a signal mm. by then so someone is like wait what if i would have fixed by then but we'll get to that mm. and then in 2022 the prime lending rate was 9.75 last but not least right now before the final announcement we are at 11.75 so I, was, I wanted to make an example whereby, let's say right before COVID, right, my interest rate, I looked up, my credit score wasn't that good. So instead of me being charged 10.25, I was charged 11%. So let's say at that point, remember it's 2018 now. Mm -hmm. So let's say we went back, I went to a bank and then they told me that um, for me, they told me that for me to actually get a home loan, I would be charged 11% annually. So then I was like, okay, that sounds good. It's not so bad. It's not too bad. But now because I want the fixed option, they then mentioned that they will add the 2%. That leaves me at 13%. Yeah. Now, if you look throughout history from 2018 right until now, it hasn't reached 13%. Now, that's the con when it comes to fixed because, yes, I did fix it. But now I'm not getting the fruits of the current prime rate if I'm in that situation. What you're saying is very, it's very important now because now if you are going to be fixing it, you must understand that there's a possibility that you're fixing it at a rate whereby you are going to be on a back foot, right? And yes, we have one of the pros being that it's easy to then say that for the next 10 to 20 years or the next five years, I'm going to be able to keep to keep my, my interest rate at 13%. But now the question is, if interest rates do not get to that 13% or surpass the 13%, then what's your game plan? Because now if you already been charged 2% more than what you should actually be paying, it's a lot. It's a lot. Now the question is that as an investor, would I be willing to lose out more money based on this fixed uh, interest rate? And generally for me, I, I wouldn't want to lose out on the 2%. Even though everybody's crying right now saying that it's sitting at 11.75 and there's a possibility of it increasing. However, if I had fixed it at 13%, I'd still be paying less right now, which means that I'm actually in a better deal than I would have been if I didn't actually fix that uh, interest rate. Yes, we've given you both the pros and the cons of variable and fixed interest rate. Now, would you recommend somebody to be fixed or would you recommend somebody to be variable? You can't use a blanket system for this. We've already put out the pros and cons and ultimately it's up to your risk management appetite what makes more sense for you. But for me right now, I'll go for variable. And you? Variable. I'm a gambler. Variable. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it guys invest like a pro with no one Cheers. see you see you weekend guys we are hosting a property workshop actually it's a picnic this time around we will be there with our shorts there will be attorneys there guys oh it's gonna be epic make sure that you do buy this ticket and if you're seeing this after the picnic make sure that you buy a ticket for next year and don't miss out invest like a pro with no one